ask who is Selena. So, she was born Selena Quintanilla on April 16th of 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas. Uh, she was the youngest child of Marcella Ophelia Quintanilla and Abraham Quintanilla Jr., who was a musician. Uh, she was raised as a Jehovah's Witness, and Abraham, uh, her father, uh, began noticing Selena's music abilities when she was six years old. And we have a quote here from him saying, Her timing, her pitch were perfect. I can see it from day one. And that is from Abraham. And uh, in 1980, Abraham would quit his job as a shipping clerk at Dow Chemical and open a Tex-Mex restaurant in Lake Jackson named Papagayos. Selena, or Papagayos, uh, if I mispronounce, as always, if I mispronounce any of these names, I do apologize. But uh, Selena and her siblings, Abraham III and Suzette, would perform at the restaurant. And uh, the following year, unfortunately, he, as a result of the 1980s oil blood, the restaurant was forced to close, with the Quintanilla family declaring bankruptcy and relocating to Corpus Christi. Uh, it was there that Abraham created a band with his children named Selena y Lo y Los Dinos. Los Ordinos. Uh, again, if I mispronounce any of these, I apologize. Uh, because the family needed money, the band and performed at street corners, weddings, fairs, and quinceañeras. And as Selena's popularity as a singer grew, her performances began to interfere with her education. And with teachers being concerned about Selena showing up tired to school because she had been performing and everything. Uh, eventually, Abraham took Selena out of school when she was in the 8th grade. And Selena eventually received a high school diploma from the American School of Correspondence in Chicago where she, when she was 17. Uh, apparently, it, it's a type of uh, remote learning type school. Uh, obviously, this is before the remote learning tech was available as it is now, but I'm sure uh, they found some way to make it work. But uh, And she eventually enrolled, enrolled at Pacific Western University in Business Administration. Um, the family toured in a refurbished old bus as they struggled with food and gasoline as they were performing and everything. And Selena would end up recording her first LP with Freddie Records in 1984 named Selena y Los Dinos, after the band and everything. And named after the band, I should say. And even though she wanted to record English language music, uh, Selena usually ended up recording Teano music compositions, which was a male-dominated Spanish language genre with influences such as polka, jazz, and country music. Uh, this was a genre popularized by Mexicans living in the United States. Uh, and Abraham believed that Selena should record music compositions related to her heritage, and Selena had to learn Spanish phonetically with her father during her recording sessions for the album, as uh, she didn't really know it natively. And uh, Selena appeared on the Johnny Carnales show, which was a popular Spanish radio program to promote the album, and she would continue to make appearances on the show for several years. And Selena was eventually discovered by musician Rudy Trevino, who was the founder of the Teano Music Awards, and she would win the Female Vocalist Award in 1987 and for nine consecutive years. Ex uh, nine consecutive years afterward, I should say. Uh, and the band was often turned away from performing at Texas music venues due to both the members' ages and Selena's being and Selena being the lead singer, with promoters saying that Selena would never be successful due to her being a female in a male-dominated genre, uh, which uh, is something that seems to come up a lot when, like, females go into a male-dominated genre, they're saying, oh, you'll never be successful in it, and then they end up proving them wrong, and as we would see with Selena, she proved them wrong. And by 1988, Selena would release five more LPs, Alpha, Munich Guido de Trapo, and the winner is Preciosa and Dolce Amor. And Jose Bejar of EMI Latin Records, which was a newly founded label, uh, alongside the new head of Sony Music Latin, both wanted to sign Selena after hearing her performance at the 1989 Teano Music Awards. Bejar, who was looking for new Latin acts, wanted to sign Selena to EMI's label, Capitol Records, while Sony Music Latin offered Abraham to sign Selena for double capital signing fee, with Abraham ultimately signing with Capitol Records due to a potential crossover album and wanting his children to be the first to sign with the new label, and thankfully Selena would at least have the opportunity to do a crossover album with EMI. But uh, Bihar and
and Stefan Finfer had requested a crossover album for Selena, and she recorded three English language compositions for the heads of EMI's pop division, probably as kind of a litmus test uh, to determine if she was ready for the crossover album. However, the request was denied as Selena was told she needed a bigger fan base to release such an album. After Charles Koppelman denied the project, Bahar believed that both the public and EMI records did not believe that a Mexican-American woman could have crossover potential. Uh, but Selena would release her self-titled debut album on October 17, 1989, with the album reaching number 7 on the U.S. Billboard Regional Mexican Albums chart. It also performed better than other recordings from other female Tejano singers. And within the same year, Coca-Cola used Selena as one of their spokespeople in Texas, with the jingles for her first two commercials being composed by her brother Abraham III and Chris Perez, who joined Selena y Los Dinos as the guitarist. Selena and Perez would subsequently begin a relationship, although they hid it from Selena's father. And actually, uh, also in preparation for this uh, crime analysis, I actually looked up the commercials that Selena did for Coca-Cola, and they're actually pretty cool. cool. And uh, see, seeing uh, how young she was at the time of recording those commercials was also pretty cool. And uh, Selena released her second album, Ben Comingo, in September of 1990. And uh, because Selena's father discovered Selena's relationship with Chris, he forbade them from dating, although Selena's mother approved of, their, uh, approved of the relationship. He threatened to disband the group if the relationship continued and called Chris a cancer in my family. That, which that is admittedly pretty harsh. Uh, however, they eloped on April 12th, 1992, with Selena believing her father would never approve their relationship and that their elopement would force her father to accept the relationship. Abraham believed that Chris was a chauvinist who would force Selena to quit her singing career. However, he would later apologize to Chris, accept the marriage, and allow Chris back into the group. Uh, the couple eventually moved into an apartment in Corpus Christi. And Selena would go on to release her third studio album, Entre a, a, a Mi Mundo, in May of 1992, a month after her elopement. Uh, this album was critically acclaimed as her breakthrough album. The record peaked at number one on the U.S. Billboard Regional Mexican Albums chart for eight consecutive months and became the first Tejano album made by a female artist to sell over 300,000 copies. And a year later, Selena released the album Live, which was, a record, which was recorded during a free concert at the Memorial Coliseum in Corpus Christi and included both previously released songs sung live and three studio recordings. It won Album of the Year at the 1994 Tejano Music Awards and was named Album of the Year by the Billboard Latin Music Awards. And in 1994, Selena began her own clothing fashion line and would open two boutiques called Selena ETC in both Corpus Christi and in San Antonio. Uh, she was in talks to open more stores in Monterey, Mexico and Puerto Rico. And she released her fourth album, Amor Prohibido, in March of 1994. Amor Prohibido became only the second Tejano music album to sell over 500,000 copies. Yeah, uh, not successful, huh? <laughs> but it just goes to show sometimes you gotta believe in yourself and make things happen no matter what your doubters may say. But uh, Amor Prohibido popularized Tejano music among a younger and wider audience than any other time in the history of the Tejano genre, with the two singles, Amor Prohibido and No Me Cuida Mas, becoming the first, six, becoming the most successful, I should say, most successful U.S. Latin singles of 1994 and 1995, respectively. Billboard magazine also included the album on its list of best 100 albums of all time. And in late 1994, EMI chairman Charles Koppelman wanted to promote Selena as an English language solo pop artist and wanted to work on a crossover album for her, engaging Grammy award winning composers. In the meantime, she continued touring, even selling out the Houston Astrodome for a concert in February of 1995. But now we move on to uh, Yolanda Sal Aldivar. Or, uh, unfortunately, the person who murdered Selena. But uh, Yolanda was born on September 19th, 1960, in San Antonio, Texas. Oh, joy, her birthday's coming up. Uh, and nothing I can really do about it, I guess. But uh, she was a nurse who, although was a fan of country music, attended one of Selena's concerts. After the concert, 
noticing that Yolan became more obsessive and possessive over Selena, to the point where her room contained a lot of Selena merchandise and she tried to distance Selena from other employees at Selena, etc. Uh, uh, the name of the boutique and everything. And this is a room that she would show to guests when they would come over to Yolanda's house. And uh, however, Yolanda maintains that she only wanted to protect Selena over the petty issues of running her boutique. And Yolanda eventually accompanied Selena on road trips and had keys to Selena's house. Once Yolanda became a business associate, the relationship between herself and Selena began to deteriorate. So it's interesting to see how trusted she was to the point where she has keys to Selena's house and everything, in which not even my like best friend, who I've known for years, over a decade, has keys to my house. So the fact that Yolanda, someone who was still, like, I would say, like relatively new to Selena's life, uh, the fact that she um, has keys to the house, that's that's a little crazy. But uh, in September of 1994, Selena met Ricardo Martinez, a doctor who claimed to have contacts in Mexico, in order for Selena to expand her boutique. He then became Selena's business advisor, although Selena's family claims that he was simply a fan who took over, who took several pictures with Selena. Yolanda warned Selena that Martinez's intentions were more than professional, with Martinez sending flowers to Selena's hotel room, which uh, definitely probably is not a good look for someone who wants to keep things professional. Also, oh, did Yolanda have a point there? Uh, who's to say? But uh, Selena would visit Martinez often, usually in disguise, and Martinez claimed to have lent Selena thousands of dollars as she was short on money, uh, which is interesting. But uh, perhaps there's a reason for that that we'll get into. But uh, starting in January of 1995, Abraham began receiving several calls and letters from angry members of the fan club saying that they had enrolled in the fan club but had yet to receive any of the memorabilia that they were promised. In addition, employees at both boutiques noticed an influx of unpaid and overdue bills being received in the mail that Yolanda had no plausible explanation for. And as a result of this, Abraham began an investigation where he found that Yolanda had embezzled over $60,000 using forged checks from both boutiques and the fan club. Uh, so a meeting was held on March 9th of 1995 at Q Productions involving Abraham, Selena, Suzette, and Yolanda in order to confront Yolanda. And at the meeting, Abraham presented Yolanda with evidence of the missing funds, to which Abraham then said that Yolanda simply stared at him without answering any of his questions, pretty much like a deer in headlights look. Also noting that Yolanda did not deny the accusations or say anything during the meeting and went back and forth between being overly emotional and being calm. Abraham then stated that he would notify the police if Yolanda did not provide evidence disproving the accusations. But it was then discovered that Abraham it was then discovered by Abraham that Yolanda had opened the bank account for the fan club under her sister's name, Maria Elida. When asked why she had done this, Yolanda under Yolanda uh, stated I'm sorry that it was that it was because the bank would not allow her to open an account under her name. Although Yolanda did not know why. Hey. And a uh, little thing I put in parentheses here in the notes for this is had she done something like this before, her, the fact that uh, the bank wouldn't let her open an account on her name probably means that she's done something suspicious like this before her embezzling money. Uh, I couldn't find any evidence of that uh, in my research, but uh, just something to keep in mind, uh, keep in the back of your minds as you're uh, listening to these, uh, uh, listening to the, uh, how things unfold here. But afterward, Yolanda abruptly left the meeting. And after Yolanda left the meeting, Abraham banned Selena from having any contact with Yolanda. However, Selena did not want to end her friendship with Yolanda, as she felt that Yolanda was essential to the success of her boutique in Mexico, or the one that she was going to open soon. Uh, another reason was that Yolanda had access to bank records, statements, and financial records which were necessary for tax purposes. Although Yolanda's name remained on the payroll, her termination of employment was pending upon the retrieval of the stolen financial records, meaning uh, Selena wanted to get the financial records first and then she would fire Yolanda. But after the meeting, Abraham discovered that the fan club's checks were signed with Maria Alida's signature and handwriting that was identical to Yolanda's, which meant that Yolanda was writing forged checks in her sister's name, cashing the checks, and keeping the funds for herself. 
And in addition, when Abraham tried finding the stolen financial records, he discovered that they had vanished, so they were missing. And definitely suspicious stuff. But now we get into the actual murder itself. But uh, before the actual murder, there were three attempts made by Yolanda to kill Selena. So, uh, on March 11th of 1995, the day after Yolanda's employment was terminated and she was replaced as president of the fan club, Yolanda brought a Taurus Model 85 snub nose, nose 38 caliber revolver and a 38 caliber hollow and 38 caliber hollow point bullets, which were designed to cause more extensive injuries than normal bullets. Uh, Yolanda told the clerk at the gun shop that she needed protection at her home as an in-home nurse because one of the patient's relatives had threatened her. Uh, on March 13th, Yolanda wrote her resignation to her lawyer, which Abraham believed to be her alibi. And later on in the day, Yolanda drove to Corpus Christi and checked into the Sand and Sea Motel. Selena was in Miami at the time, but returned to Corpus Christi on March 14th. When she returned, Yolanda contacted Selena in order to schedule a meeting, although Yolanda told Selena to meet her in a parking lot 25 minutes away as there was too much traffic. And when Selena arrived, she told Yolanda that she could remain in charge of her business affairs in Mexico. And Abraham believed that Selena did this so that Yolanda could be in charge until Selena found her replacement. Afterwards, Yolanda showed Selena the gun she purchased, and Selena told her to get rid of it, stating that she would protect her from her father. So I guess Selena was under the impression that Yolanda brought the gun just in case Abraham tried something against her. Or at least that's probably what Selena was uh, thinking about when she saw the gun. So Abraham believes that Selena was able to talk Yolanda down and was the reason Yolanda did not kill her in the parking lot. The next day, Yolanda returned the gun, stating that her father had brought her a 22 caliber pistol. But Yolanda would then accompany Selena on a trip to Tennessee, where she finished her crossover album. While there, Selena informed Yolanda that some bank statements were missing and, then, and she asked her to return them and when they got to Texas. Yolanda would then repurchase the gun on March 29th and try to convince Selena to meet her alone at a motel. However, when news of Selena's arrival broke, she was mobbed by fans, which is why Abraham believes that Yolanda didn't kill Selena that time as there were too many witnesses. So that's the uh, second uh, attempt to kill Selena. And according to Abraham, the third attempt and the third and final unsuccessful attempt came as Yolanda travels to Monterey during the last week of March. Dr. Martinez received calls from Yolanda stating that she had been raped on March 29th. She then called Dr. Martinez again the next day, and Dr. Martinez sent an employee to Yolanda's motel room to investigate, as it appeared that someone was trying to snatch the phone away from her. However, the employee found that Yolanda had left a few minutes earlier, and on March 30th, Yolanda returned from Monterey and checked into a Days Inn motel, where she then contacted Selena and told her that she had been raped, which Abraham uh, believes Eves became uh, Yolanda's new alibi. This would also be the last message that they would receive from Yolanda. And uh, Yolanda asked Selena to come to her motel room alone. However, she was accompanied by her husband, Chris. Uh, Chris waited by his truck while Selena went into Yolanda's motel room. As Selena and Chris drove back to their house, Selena noticed that Yolanda gave her the wrong bank statements. Yolanda then tried contact Selena through her pager, desperately wanting to take her to a hospital where Yolanda stated that she was bleeding due to being raped. However, Abraham believed that it was an attempt to get Selena to return to the motel alone. Chris said that it was too late that night and he didn't want Selena to return to the motel alone. However, unbeknownst to him, Selena agreed to meet Yolanda the next morning. Now, oh, obviously I can say this because I'm like, uh, wasn't there, or this happened well before I was born, and I'm like level-headed, at least right now, where I'm not in this situation, but honestly, this type of stuff I'd be on guard. Like, why is she so desperate to get me alone without anyone else? else? Like, why is she desperate to get me alone and get me to return here alone? And then why did she not uh, call the police or go to the hospital herself or have someone else take her to the hospital? Why are you so desperate to get me to take you to the hospital well, if this supposedly happened? No, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Uh, if it did happen to Yolanda, if she indeed was raped, then uh, that is absolutely unfortunate and uh, very disturbing. But uh, it seemed very suspicious. I'd probably be on guard. Her, uh, with all this, but uh, nevertheless, Selena was going to return to meet Yolanda the next morning. So, on 
March 31st at 7.30 a.m., Selena headed for Yolanda's hotel room, where Yolanda told Selena that she had been raped in Mexico. Selena took Yolanda to Doctors Regional Hospital, where it was noted that Yolanda showed signs of depression in, uh, by the doctors. So Yolanda told doctors that she had bled a little, which angered Selena because Yolanda had told Selena that she had bled a lot. Uh, so essentially two different stories is what we're getting. So Yolanda was then and told to travel to San Antonio to receive a, gy a gynecological, a gynecological examination as she was a resident of San Antonio. The hospital was in Corpus Christi and the rape occurred in Mexico. Oh, so uh, I guess the hospital was saying that it was out of their hands, essentially. But as they drove back, Selena told Yolanda that it was best they stayed apart for a while as to not upset Abraham, aka, you know, Selena's father. But uh, at 10 a.m., Abraham called Chris to ask where Selena was as she was supposed to do a recording at Q Productions that morning and had not yet arrived. And when Chris contacted Selena to remind her of the recording, Selena told him that she had forgotten the recording and that she was taking care of some business and would be at Q Productions right after. Sadly, this was the last time that Chris and Selena would speak. And uh, Selena and Yolanda began loudly arguing at the motel, which caused some guests to complain. And Selena told Yolanda that she could no longer be trusted and demanded the, ref demanded the financial papers be returned. And Selena then dumped Yolanda's satchel and found both bank statements and the gun, the gun that Yolanda had purchased. And Yolanda then pointed the gun at Selena at around 11.48 a.m. And as Selena attempted to flee, Yolanda shot her in her lower right shoulder, puncturing an artery and causing a massive loss of blood. Selena, who was critically wounded, ran towards the lobby, leaving a 392-foot trail of blood. She clutched her chest and screamed, help me, help me, I've been shot. Yolanda still chased after her, pointing the gun at her, but then returned to her room. Selena collapsed, collapsed on the floor at 11.49. The motel staff and paramedics performed multiple attempts to, blood, to stop the blood flow and stabilize Selena, but nothing worked. They tried putting like uh, gauze around the wound, and they tried to uh, stop up the blood flow, but uh, it was leaking so much that there was nothing they could do. So Selena was admitted to Corpus Christi Medical Hospital, where her, after more attempts to save her life, she unfortunately was declared clinically brain dead. And at 1.05 p.m., Selena was pronounced dead at age 23 from both blood loss and cardiac arrest. Due to the overwhelming media interest, an autopsy was performed where it was discovered that the bullet entered Selena's upper right back near her shoulder blade, passed through her chest cavity, severed the right subclavian artery, the subclavian artery, pronounced and exited her right upper chest it took minutes from the point of impact for selena to be drained virtually all the blood in her body which caused her to rapidly bleed to death the doctors believe that if the bullet had only been one millimeter higher or lower the wound would have been less severe and uh obviously the gun that yolanda purchased is seemed to be for that intention to shoot to kill pretty much but also uh, i imagine and, and this is just an inference on my part, but I imagine uh, knowing exactly where to shoot was probably also Yolanda's uh, goal as well. Oh, and she probably knew exactly where due to her being a nurse and everything, so she knew exactly what part of the body to shoot in order to kill Selena, unfortunately. But um, after the shooting, Yolanda attempted to leave the motel parking lot where it was believed that she was headed to Q Productions to kill Abraham and others who were waiting for Selena. And a responding police officer on the scene noticed Yolanda and drew his gun, ordering her out of her truck. However, Yolanda did not comply, instead reversing and parking adjacent into two cars, with her vehicle then being blocked by the police vehicle. Yolanda pointed the gun at herself and threatened to commit suicide. Both the SWAT team and the FBI Crisis Negotiation Unit were brought in, with musical musicologist Himalus Novas noting that the event was similar to O.J. Simpson's planned suicide 10 months earlier. And the police tried taking, tried talking, I should say, Yolanda down and persuading her to give herself up. Motel guests were ordered to remain in their rooms until police escorted them out, and later in the afternoon, police drained the gas from Yolanda's vehicle and turned on the floodlights. And after over nine hours of the standoff, Yolanda finally gave up and turned herself in. And many Selena fans gathered at the scene, with many of them weeping as Yolanda was taken away. The police told the press that the possible motive behind the murder was Yolanda being fired by Selena, uh, which was also argued in court, or, uh, as we'll get to. But Yolanda was arraigned and pleaded not guilty on April 3rd. Her 
bail was originally set at $100,000 but was raised to $500,000 as she was considered a flight risk. Is which, uh, if you remember from Bernie Madoff crime analysis, he was also considered a flight risk. Pretty much that uh, they would try to flee if they were out of uh, custody and everything. They would try to uh, flee from where uh, they were arrested and everything. But uh, they were curious. Uh, there were many who were curious as to why the death penalty was not implemented. There was even a gang in Texas who wanted to raise enough money to kill Yolanda. But uh, there was no one who wanted to defend Yolanda out of fear of community scrutiny and retaliation, although they finally found a defense attorney because uh, obviously a defense attorney was needed. But after a three-week after a three week trial and a following two-hour and 30-minute deliberation where a lot happened, it was uh, said that her, her motives could have been to kill uh, Selena out of retaliation of being fired and mistrusted by Abraham, and who was uh, the head of the Quintanilla family. Um, but after her, the trial and the two hour and three minute deliberation, uh, Yolanda was found guilty of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison with no eligibility of parole until March of 2025. Around 2014, Yolanda began representing herself in order to gain an early parole. And um, Abraham himself, uh, Selena's father, said he doesn't care if Yolanda gets out of jail or not because, in his words, nothing is going to bring his daughter back, which is unfortunate, but sadly is true. But after, but, um, or, 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 that part, I'm sorry, but due to some events of the trial, the coverage of it, comparisons between the two, and interest in the case from fans of Selena, the trial was called the OJ trial for Hispanics. That's uh, their words, not mine, but uh, there was even uh, fans waiting outside playing Selena's music, waiting for the verdict, and people cheering as Yolanda was taken off to jail after sentencing. But uh, now we get into some of the aftermath of this, which something I forgot to note, but I do want to talk about is that uh, Selena's final posthumous album, Dreaming of You, was also released after her death. But uh, getting into more aspects of the aftermath, uh, there were several media news outlets who covered Selena's death as updates came in. After her death, there were several tributes from music stations, including Tejano stations, who played Selena's music nonstop. And actually, he, uh, at first people thought it was an early April Fool's joke because it was the last day of March, April 1st was the next day, so they thought it was an early joke, but it turns out that was not the case. And uh, People Magazine released a commemorative cover several days after Selena's death, believing interest in it would soon wane. And it sold almost a million copies, and the cover became a collector's item, which was a first in People Magazine history at the time. Uh, Selena's story was made into a movie in 1997, with Jennifer Lopez cast as Selena. Her casting drew some criticism as her ancestry was Puerto Rican instead of Mexican, like Selena's was. Uh, however, her portrayal of Selena drew praise and made her famous. And I think the movie is where I first learned about Selena, and uh, the gist of what happened to her was the movie I remember watching in Spanish class around, I believe, 7th or 8th grade. But um, that was a while ago. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. Uh, I may check out the movie at some point. I mean, um, I didn't check it out in time for this uh, crime analysis, mostly because I was already pretty late, so I didn't have time to check out the movie. But I definitely want to. Do it. In fact, I'm definitely going to at some point, and I may even do a review of it. I'm not sure, but. Uh, on the day Selena was killed, there were vigils and memorials held throughout both Texas and California. Uh, and when the Quintanilla family held an open casket viewing, between 30,000 and 40,000 fans passed by the casket. And on April 12th, 1995, Texas Governor and future President George W. Bush declared her birthday Selena Day in Texas. And in March of 2012, Chris Perez, Selena's widower, would publish the book To Selena with Love, describing their relationships and struggles, which garnered praise from both fans and critics. So, uh, that is that for this uh, analysis. Very tragic things uh, that happened throughout here. Or, and I think one of the big takeaways from this is be careful who you trust. And I mentioned uh, on System Shock Radio, which is out now, so check out that video. But I mentioned there how sometimes you don't really know people's true intentions with, when they're in your circle. Well, your circle of friends, and some of them may not have your best intentions in mind and maybe uh, going behind your back and doing things. Here we saw that Yolanda was stealing money from them, taking money from herself, and uh, ki and killed Selena. Someone got killed. Oh, partially 
partially out of, I, I imagine partially out of retaliation for being discovered, caught, and uh, soon to be fired. But also, the fact that Selena still wanted to hang on to that friendship, I think, uh, sadly, ended up being one of the factors in her death. The fact that uh, the Yolanda wasn't cut off, that the fact that the police weren't called at the time of Yolanda wasn't arrested for that. Uh, because they had the evidence, they had uh, the records to prove that Yolanda barely put up any resistance, but they instead tried to distance themselves, and uh, sadly it didn't work out. But uh, yeah, so just be careful who you have in your circle of friends. You never truly know people's true intentions, and uh, it's unfortunate that we lost someone uh, who was so talented and also so beautiful in Selena because of this. But nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, again, sorry it was late, but I hope you uh, enjoyed. I hope